and I think I am going to introduce our next speaker. And I am very honored to introduce Dr. Sheikh, Dr. Shaikh, which is who is a professor at Rutgers University, teaching graduate courses in both lipid chemistry and food chemistry, plus undergraduate lecture and lab courses covering food science as an interdisciplinary discipline. Dr. Shaikh focused on logic and learning rather than memorizing, has earned her many teaching awards, including the Cruis Award for Excellence in Teaching from IFT and the Northeast Regional Award from USDA. During the pandemic, Dr. Shaikh converted all her lectures for online teaching, not just presentation. Her greatest challenge was teaching a hybrid lab course where she filmed in-person sections while actively mentoring each group, combined the film segments with annotation into a lab recording for asynchronous presentation and developed at home versions of the lab exercises to give online students experiences comparable to those in lab. So I'm happy to have, we are happy to have here like Dr. Sheik. Thank you for that nice introduction. I'm very pleased, good, and good morning, everyone. I'm very pleased to share my perspectives on teaching for learning online, which is more than just moving course notes to virtual platforms. The most common practice that we have when forced, I did. Oh, no, I didn't, sorry. Um, okay, so let me go back. That's where technology gets us all. So I'm sharing, um, as I mentioned before, I'm sharing my perspectives on teaching for learning online which is more than just moving course notes um, to a virtual platform. So the most common practice that we have when forced to move from classrooms to online is just to simplify course notes, convert them to PowerPoint slides, and then present them on Zoom or other platforms. But online learning has many challenges beyond technology, which you've already seen, that make this not enough. First is that students read notes online differently than on paper or a blackboard. They see relatively small areas, they skim and search rather than read in detail, and they're almost always multitasking while either listening to lectures or studying. So then how do we direct their focus? Second, new concepts need more than words to build pictures in students' minds, especially online because auditory learning is different than studying written texts. Students, when they're listening, tune in and out, and they often miss details. If you have lecture recordings that you post, students may not even take notes or read the, or read the texts and depend only on re-listening to the tapes. Many students just listen for the first time for orientation and then take notes during subsequent viewings. And then last, connecting to material on screen delivered by a voice, it's difficult. So we've all experienced, I'm sure. So applications and extensions must be built into lectures to keep students involved. So what's the solution? Mine may be different than others, but I think that we need to combine sight and sound, increase content rather than decrease it, and then add a lot of explanations applications and connections. Project notes rather than slides. Add highlighting and color coding to attract attention to key points. Use a large arrow, there's mine, um, to connect listening to the position on the page. Add lots of pictures, lots and lots of pictures and diagrams. And then write out explanations that you're also give link, giving orally because students need to see and hear the same material to, um, to really connect to it and remember it. And then add challenges. Of course, these are all obvious in education and they apply in person as well as online. 
So let's look at some examples here. This is a slide that was reduced uh, from a page. We all know that slides are, are small and you can only put a certain amount of information on it. So slides actually isolate factums and they lose information if they're not accompanied by notes or oral recordings. So instead of using slides, I keep my full pages. Put your voice on the page, convert the slides back to notes and add all of the details and the explanations that you want students to learn and understand. I'm sure we've all had the experience of going back and looking at notes we had from our own courses where you just had a slide or a graph and you couldn't get all of the notes put on. You have to put the information that students want where they can get it. So then project the full page and the full screen and use a large cursor area arrow. So as you talk through the page and you, I'm not saying read through the page, but you're talking about it, you can point to what you're talking about. That keeps their eyes focused on where you're talking. They don't have to guess where you are. It also shows them, here's the page, this is what's going to be in my notes. Here's what we're talking about. So when they go back to, the, to study that page, they remembered what you were talking about in the lecture. That's imprinted on their mind, so they get a double whammy for connecting this material to neuro and neuronal pathways. Guide student reading with visual cues to what's important in the notes. This is an earlier version of my notes. I've always used bolding to um, introduce sections or important points, but I found that online, especially, students were skimming and they tend to roll over the black and white. So I had to go back through and everything that I want them to really see or to catch their attention, I put in a color. Of course, you can put too many colors, so you have to be judicious with this. But here in the beginning, they saw, OK, we're talking about neutral lipids, but they didn't connect the, the um, finer print with the, 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 um, the bolded and they didn't get the definition. Now, by putting in colors, they know that, def that neutral lipids are fatty acid esters of glycerol and it comes back down and fatty acids are esterified to glycerol to generate it. So it reinforces it. I also use color on reactions so they see what's moving, what functional uh, groups are moving and where they go. Now on this slide in particular, I found they weren't looking at the mono and diglycerides. Um, so by going back and using a color for the names, mono and diacylglycerols, it attracted their attention. So they followed the entire slide. Make your lectures come alive. Add lots of pictures and diagrams that connect concepts to something that students know and understand. And this is particularly critical online because demonstrations and in-class samples are not possible, or at least they're very difficult. They used to call me the bag lady because I would always come to lecture with bags of lots of samples to be able to show because most of the students have never been exposed to the concepts of, that we're talking about. So I had to replace those samples with a lot of extra pictures in my notes. Um, consistency of fat is one concept they find very difficult and to grasp until they see samples. So I had to add pictures that show the difference between a soft plastic consistency, a mixed consistency where you have some solid and some uh, liquid portions, and then a hard fracturable non-plastic consistency. Um, in addition, the key functions of, of fats and oils. Lubricity is a concept they, that was just not familiar to them and they couldn't quite grasp until I showed them, okay, we have oils, how do oils slide through your mouth? And they got it. So by connecting pictures to everything, they can connect it to their real life and be able to think about it. Write explanations in more detail than you think is necessary. Students need to hear and see together to learn. So in an earlier version of my notes, I gave um, the basic information and then I talked about it in class and gave all of the details. If students didn't remember it, couldn't apply it on an exam. So I've had to go back, especially online, go back, add all of the details that I want them to know about. So I put all of the details about how fats add, act in the spread of cookies, add pictures so they see it. Then I talk about this in class, they're seeing it, they're hearing it, they see what, what they would expect in cookies and they can put it all together. 
And finally, build in connections, challenges, and incentives to invest the students in the course content. So throughout my undergrad notes, and some of my graduates as well, I, I insert food for thought questions that challenge the students to connect the fundamental information that we're talking about to something that they know. Here is just the anomalous behaviors of water. And most of the time they look at it and say, oh, well, that's just basic chemistry. I can see that in a, in a chemistry book. But these are all properties that are very important in the function of water and foods. So I, yes, I talk about it in class sometimes, but I also challenge them to think about it on their own. If you see this behavior, what does it mean? It also helps teach them to do think, thinking, critical thinking, and it encourages them to not just um, memorize everything that's in the class, but think about what it means. I, in addition to the food for thought challenges, I give them extra credit challenges where I take something that's in class and have them look beyond. There's an example of we talked about six types of browning reactions. So then I ask them to find 10 examples of the different browning reactions in foods at their home, um, and then explain what they saw and what kind of browning they thought it was. I also did this with, for example, with um, microbial spoilage of foods so that they continually are connecting what we're talking about in class to what, so it's something that they already know. So the bottom line to all of this then is, as Benjamin Franklin told us, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. So I thank you and I guess we'll hold questions until the discussion period. What happened to the Thank discussion? you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, Karen, for such a wonderful presentation very very interesting and i already have a couple of questions for you uh, but first uh, we are going just to open now the panel discussions and i'm going just to start uh, uh, reading some questions that are having coming for for the presenters and um, 